The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever part of the day you're in. Uh, this is Krishna Vedula on behalf of uh, IFIS GEDC and IUCE. Welcome you to another uh, completely packed uh, webinar today. We have more than 200 people with us. Uh, as you all know, this is uh, the world is going through a crisis, and I think this series of webinars is meant to have us communicate with each other as to how to handle this crisis throughout the world. So I'm here delighted to have with us an expert from China today as our speaker. So I'm going to have, uh, have put, him, put him in there, Dr. Zheng Ye. Uh, we'll, uh, Zhu from uh, Sustec will be with us in just a second as soon as I make him the presenter. Okay, now click show my screen. Okay. Perfect, you're on. So hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank GDC and IFI to give me this opportunity to share our experience on online teaching and learning at the SUSTEC. SUSTEC stands for Southern University of Science and Technology. Uh, we are located in Shenzhen, uh, just across Hong Kong, it's just an hour a car ride away from Hong Kong. Shenzhen is a modern city, center of high tech in China. It's very similar to uh, Silicon Valley in US. So now SUSTEC is a research intensive public university established in 2012 and fully supported by Stenson Municipal Government. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, 497 full-time faculty members, 4,200 undergraduate students, and 2,200 graduate students. So uh, our university focuses on science, engineering, medicine, and the business. So uh, actually, uh, it's a global university. We use English as instruction language. And uh, this actually the uh, field uh, core uh, like expertise in the uh, specialties in the university. We teach in English for the uh, courses and we have all students uh, have overseas experiences. So the College of Engineering at SUSTEC was established in uh, 2015 and it has now 195 students, actually he is 180, but we have now 195 uh, faculty members, 1,300 undergraduate students and 1,100 graduate students. That's actually basic. And we have uh, seven departments and the three schools in College of Engineering at the SUSTEC. And as you can see here, I will not go into details. So my main objective today is to share our experience on student-centered learning environment for online teaching and the learning. Actually, we're still focusing on student-centered learning environment uh, for our teaching. So first, Let's look, for, look at the spread of uh, COVID-19 in China and the need of online teaching and learning. The so first COVID-19 case was confirmed uh, on December 1st, 2019. And then actually shortly after that, it was a travel peak for uh, China because of uh, Chinese spring festivals causing outbreak of a COVID-19 virus. On January uh, 20th, human-to-human uh, -human transmission of COVID-19 was confirmed. And then because of that, and to avoid or to minimize the uh, uh, spread, the uh, uh, Wuhan city was shutting down on uh, February 1st. So the uh, whole, whole city was shutting down. And actually that was the, and then uh, uh, the university actually uh, uh, the, uh, was supposed to start 
on a much uh, much nice, but the uh, the uh, class was uh, started actually on the uh, we had to like made the announcement to the students not to return on campus. An online course courses were were planned uh, to deliver deliver as scheduled. That's actually a decision by the uh, upper management at the university. And then we studied our university on time, uh, but all the courses are delivered uh, online, and all faculty members and the staff also working online uh, starting February 10th. So on March 9th, 2020, and all the faculty members and staff returned on campus, and we operate uh, at uh, more than 94% uh, in Shenzhen by March 2020. As you can see, because of this uh, decision on isolation of the uh, people, and the things get uh, actually required, uh, recovered quite uh, uh, effectively. But uh, on uh, March 11, 2020, uh, World Health Organization declared the uh, co uh, coronavirus uh, a pandemic disease. So, and uh, and also at the moment, you now China and some other regions globally are determined as very high risk areas. So, as we all experience, and most of the uh, places now they shut down the schools. So that's basically uh, the situation. So it is clear that we uh, uh, postpone return of the student and the faculty back on campus for regular schooling. But the courses were offered online through online teaching. So in a sense, uh, basically, even uh, there is no schooling on uh, campus, but the education still uh, goes on. All the faculty members were asked to ensure online education quality and interactions between the students and the faculty complying with the online teaching principle of in-class experience for all the aspects of teaching and the learning. Even though we uh, uh, deliver the uh, lectures online, but the way ensure you know the uh, teaching and the learning environment is the same as the classroom uh, uh, lecturing. That's actually the decision that uh, uh, our up management emphasizes. So of course, to do the uh, uh, the online teaching, it requires extra steps and hence extra work. Uh, first, you need to create course size. Uh, this is a really, uh, we do this on the, uh, like on Blackboard. Uh, in US and I, or in Canada, sometimes it's called E-Class. You have to go on the, uh, uh, the website, create the course. This usually is done by the uh, manager, uh, web manager does that. The instruct instructors only need to log into the Blackboard, find their courses, in Blackboard and upload the course materials. Then determine uh, the method and make announcement to uh, Blackboard. On Blackboard, the delivery method of lectures. So although Blackboard is a good uh, method for the organizing uh, courses, but the, really the delivery of lectures uh, is not the best way using the Blackboard. So also uh, during this time, you can create the student chat group through uh, some media like a WeChat or PQ in China, which is very similar to MSN or Facebook or WhatsApp, Skype, etc. So to create this group is very important because some students may not know uh, the Blackboard or they, they may not check the Blackboard to ensure the messages reaching the students and using email actually is not best way to uh, uh, to get connected with students because sometimes uh, emails go to junk box and then you have to prepare the uh, course materials such as videos or and PPT well in the best. So at the subject we require instructors upload 
their materials to Blackboard one week in advance. Actually, that's actually basically you have to do. And then we have materials on the Blackboard and they announce the lecture time. Then we start to deliver the uh, class. You can do teaching and the interactions through different online platforms. So here is a few uh, things like to summarize the steps or you know your check marks for online teaching and the learning. It includes make a course uh, available to students and upload the syllabus and the learning objectives. This is very important so students know what do they expect from this course. The upload course materials such as lecture videos, the PPT, and then create online in-class quizzes. This actually is very important because this allows uh, uh, more effective uh, uh, like interactions with students in class. Then you upload assignments and communicate with students using discussion board or enter the, the manage the grade. They say a few things you, know, you do when you do the, uh, the course materials on Blackboard. And then you communicate with students. Keeping in touch with students is vital for any changes to class. You remind the students to preview course materials. Uh, that actually is very important. And uh, let them know how you plan to communicate with them and how often uh, you communicate. Uh, to tell the students how often you expect them to check their blackboard is also important. As you can see, because it's not a face-to-face -face or in-classroom uh, uh, teaching, and this communication becomes very, very important. You allow students to complete the assignment uh, before the submission deadline so that you, know, you cannot do it in classroom, so you can do it uh, through the uh, chat group. And, um, and also, you have to match online course with timetable of the schedule of the course so that you know, the student gets the value of the uh, education. And also notify student online course information, so like uh, uh, meeting codes, or so it's like when you log on, you're in the codes so that you have to allow, uh, let students to know. And also you use the Blackboard and the chat room to make announcement to avoid using email which may go to the junk mail. And the Blackboard also keeps all the discussions in place. So it's a very, very important that uh, you have that. And as you can see here, the, the course needs to be more organized than regular course when you do the uh, online uh, uh, teaching. So here, uh, is a like a like a survey we did for all the courses we have on Sustack. What type of uh, uh, media they are using for the lecturing? And as you can see here, Tencent Media is the uh, uh, most popular one uh, for the delivering uh, uh, lectures. And this actually is very similar to Google Media. And it's you know we use uh, uh, Tencent meeting because uh, the uh, administration use this organized the conference, the video conference. So people are familiar with this. And uh, still some people use the uh, Blackboard uh, as the uh, uh, teaching me uh, medium. But in this case, uh, the Blackboard is used only to upload the videos of lectures. And the lecture time is usually used as tutorial, like questions and answers through QQ or, or, or the uh, Blackboard. So Zoom is another uh, uh, medium, which is very similar to a uh, Tessent meeting, but can rec uh, record the lectures. So during the lecture, you can record the whole, whole lecture, and then you can upload uh, to Blackboard for the reviews by the students of the uh, lecture. So that is very important when you have students spread all over the world, like you have many different uh, uh, students from different countries, have different time zones. This is very, very good way because you can upload the videos and students can uh, watch at their time. And also uh, Ring Classroom is another uh, media 
for delivering uh, courses. This actually it was developed at the Tsinghua University in China. It combines Blackboard and the text and the meeting functions, but no voice communication and interactions, only typing for the communication. So uh, it is also used by a few of us. Uh, and also QQ is very powerful for the uh, uh, chatting, for the interactions among the group. You can create the chatting group, chatting uh, group, so that you know in the in the group you can talk to each other, type to each other. Uh, in QQ is very effective, and for the for the interactions. And the sidecar is similar to Blackboard, and used mostly by the uh, students uh, in the in the computers as they require. And, and also there is a test and the classroom, which is also very similar to the uh, test and the meeting room, uh, and not much difference. Now there are still a few people use the uh, Billy Billy. Billy Billy is used because they can uh, have the uh, medium screen. So the uh, messages can fly on the screen while you are teaching and uh, you know the student can see the messages from other students in the class and then it's more interactive. Otherwise, in the other methods like in Zoom or Tesla, you either, still either uh, make the voice to interrupt the teaching or you have to look at the uh, uh, notes side. So that actually is a few things, uh, uh, you know, you can different uh, ways to look at the uh, uh, delivery of uh, lectures. So here is a comparison among three popular interactive online teaching media and the rain classroom test and the meeting and the zoom so uh, advantage of a uh, rain classroom there is no limit uh, to the numbers of users so that is the very uh, attractive but it's not a very stable sometimes and effective uh, interactions like you have the uh, bulletin uh, a screen, or you can have vote or test. And students can visit the course site at any time. And they actually, uh, the rich uh, data of teaching and learning feedback is created here. So that's actually, you can see here, you can use a, a whiteboard, you can record the uh, uh, lectures, you can uh, but you cannot share the screen for the ring classroom. And you can have file sharing, online chatting, and then you can you cannot have remote control. So that is another disadvantage. And also, multiplayer uh, uh, online videos are not uh, allowed here. And then, of course, you can have course side for the uh, for the uh, uh, the uh, ring classroom, and you can pull test and assignment all this. So you can have post. The material on the ring uh, classroom. I already mentioned the test and the meeting, which actually uh, uh, can have very attractive uh, uh, features, as you can see here. So you can have multiplayer online voice, and you can have remote controls, so control the class. But and also you can have a screen share, which is uh, not uh, allowed in the ring classroom. But it cannot record the uh, uh, lectures and also does not have the pop out the whiteboard. So as you can see here, Zoom uh, is more, more like uh, uh, powerful. It only have two uh, uh, cross here, which means they cannot have a core side. And also uh, they, they can, you cannot post the uh, materials on the Zoom. So in order to make the online teaching more effective, usually you combine two different methods, such as a Blackboard uh, with Zoom or Blackboard with test and meeting. And the Blackboard is really used for the announcement, upload course, uh, course materials, assignment, and the related materials. That's actually the, a quick comparison. So now let's look at uh, a, a roadmap of online teaching, what actually basically involved. So it is very, very important to build communication channels through Blackboard and the QQ group chat. 
So Blackboard is good to keep files, but the QQ is more interactive, like uh, in real time. So these two combinations or some similar combinations are very, very powerful for the, uh, uh, for the online teaching. So basically in terms of uh, online teaching, you can divide into three groups. One is before class, and then of course the live uh, class sessions and then after class. So in the before class, you have to instruct, have to post the announcement, upload the slide, the videos, and the related materials. Student preview the materials on Blackboard, and then the, during the uh, online lecture, uh, going through key points, more interactive to gauge the student's knowledge, and also pre-class efforts is very important. And then you have to adjust the pace of teaching through in-class interactions, encourage the students to be involved, as, and almost like through the notes or the even a, a, a flip class teaching. Of course, after class, uh, you have to upload the lecture videos so that the student can watch uh, them. And also students will work out the uh, assignment, the submit the homework, and then the instructors mark the assignment and the post the marks. So basically, uh, interactions, as we all know, is very important during the uh, uh, lecturing. And there are three different levels of interactions, uh, live interactions. Uh, is, is like basically you can do through the vote and also you can do through the bulletin screen. And sometimes you can make a simple uh, quizzes to make sure students are paying attention uh, to the uh, class. Because students could uh, uh, sign in, but then they walk away doing other things, not very concentrated. But they, pose the uh, uh, questions quickly or uh, the simple questions and then ask the student response. It's a very good way to get the student's attention and concentration. And of course, you can uh, uh, do the uh, medium interactions with students through the assignment and the group discussions. And also more importantly, if you want the really uh, strong uh, interaction and the student-centered learning, you can have group discussions. Basically, you post the videos of the lecture on, uh, online in the Blackboard, and then students watch the video before the class, and then they come to discuss the concept, and the instructors just kind of you know, guide the students through, and almost like the, uh, the uh, flipped classroom uh, learning environment. So another important thing is also challenges in uh, uh, online teaching is lab courses. Teaching lab course is very, very difficult. And the tips for uh, delivering online lab really uh, is very difficult. So here are two examples. One is a materials lab course, one is an electrical engineering lab course. As you can see here, you still can do decent job if you organize the uh, uh, lab course uh, in a well, so you can always post the uh, uh, the lab materials on the blackboard, and then uh, to uh, ask a student review the materials. Then for the uh, materials lab, you can uh, upload the uh, uh, videos, like demonstration videos, so students can watch the video as if they are doing the lab, and then you can ask them to do the simulation. <laughs> And also providing the uh, uh, data, uh, as if you are collecting data in the real lab, and then the student can analyze the uh, data and still submit the uh, report and get the grade. So that is really one of the ways to organize lab. Of course, another uh, interesting way to organize lab is very you know, similar, but in terms of uh, uh, video uh, demonstration, you, know, you start a lot of the students access lab station on campus through VPN and do the simulation by different uh, uh, software like LabVIEW or Candence. And then the student can get the data, do the simulation lab, and then submit the report. So in a sense, if, if you organize well, you still uh, you are still be able to uh, uh, do majority of the lab uh, materials or uh, lab concepts 
and then when that when the crisis is over, then when the student come back, maybe you have a demonstration lab very quickly so that the you know students can have physical a uh, sense of the experiment. So now uh, delivering of lecture is very important, but really at the end of the day, we need to know how well students are learning through this online teaching. So online learning evaluation is very important. And then there are many different ways to do the online uh, uh, learning evaluations in terms of teaching and the learning activities. You can preview the materials, they have discussions, they have quizzes, they have assignments, uh, so that you gauge where their students are following. And also you can still create a project-based report and open book exams. And actually, as you, probably as you also heard, you know, that you can have even the online internship. Uh, we heard uh, a couple of days ago about the uh, webinar. And then the evaluation objective is to encourage students to be more involved by participation and the grading. So that is the thing, how do you, uh, you know, uh, gauge how effective. And the student learning feedback is also very important. And actually that's one of the things we have done is to uh, collect the information from the students after a couple of weeks and then get feedback and then you really, uh, you know, adjust. So that, as I mentioned here, timely evaluation and the timely feedback is the best way for the learning and for the teaching. So that is basically uh, uh, the things. So now, and then we did a, a, a quick survey uh, for the uh, students for a few uh, uh, large classes. And we uh, surveyed about 400 students uh, through four courses. And here are some of the very interesting findings from our students. First, as you can see here, where their students preview the course materials before online class. And actually, as you can see, actually, majority of students, uh, about 56%, they had a, a quick preview, but about 30% still fully uh, preview the materials. From here, you know, the major majority of students are very keen to learn the materials. And also, you know, we have the videos. The videos usually are more time consuming. And still, we have 55% uh, uh, of the students fully preview the materials. The reason they have to do this because in the class, uh, instructors will really guide the students through discussions and all the materials already done in the uh, pre-class uh, video uh, reviewing. And also in terms of the uh, uh, time on the assignment, as you can see, students still spend quite a bit of time on the assignment, typically uh, more than two hours uh, a week for a core course. And, and also, when students stuck, how do they get the help uh, during the online uh, class? As you can see here, the group discussion is the most important uh, way to get the uh, uh, answers for the uh, questions. And this is actually very similar to the uh, uh, on campus uh, uh, learning because still like to do the homework together and uh, set up the group. This is still similar uh, through the online uh, uh, you know, chatting group to uh, to get answers. So and also uh, in terms of uh, uh, online teaching or face-to-face uh, -face teaching and as you can see here even though online teaching is uh, convenient but still students prefer face-to-face -face, uh, classroom teaching. I think that this is a few more, you know, uh, the uh, interactions or learning environment. And also when you, uh, when you ask the student to compare interactions in, uh, in uh, online teaching as compared to face-to-face -to -face teaching, and the majority of people feel actually is not as effective, uh, uh, but still, more than half feels, you know, is is okay or at least not different from the classroom. So that is the feedback from students. And also, when we ask them uh, what kind of uh, method they prefer, and as you can see here, the uh, pre-recorded lectures are more like are more popular. Uh, students like to watch because this is very convenient; they can pause 
and then they can uh, uh, watch back until they follow, they understand. And then we ask the student how to uh, engage students in online teaching and learning. And the majority of students say, you know, pop quiz is very effective because when you ask a quiz in class and the students have to respond. And of course, if you provide extra credits, and that's another good way to, uh, to motivate the students. Uh, and also, of course, the question and answer sessions. And some students feel you know, the attendance is also important. So here uh, is some uh, also the uh, comparison between the face-to-face -face teaching and online teaching in terms of flexibility. The online teaching is more flexible, and this is also from the students' uh, answers. And in terms of access to the course materials, as you can see, also uh, the online teaching is more uh, uh, convenient more responsiveness during online class. And this is actually surprising because, you know, then uh, uh, what we saw is when the students have problems, they write on the uh, note and then the group will respond. And also the instructor can get the sense and they can uh, explain. So it's actually more uh, response to the uh, questions. And also readiness of recorded course materials, of course, is uh, uh, always better online teaching. But the more interactions among the students and teachers, of course, and the student feels in classroom is more, uh, uh, more beneficial. And also the students are more engaged in the uh, uh, classroom uh, uh, teaching and the learning. And of, of course, the uh, online teaching requires more self-discipline. If the students are not very disciplined, and then they can, uh, you know, walk away, do other things, and then they become not very concentrated on the work. And also required students manage time better because you have to, you know, get on and ins instructor answers questions more promptly when you have the online teaching. And the learning environment, students still feel it's, you know, come to the classroom is much more, you know, uh, effective. And then here is a quick list of the pros and the cons in terms of online uh, teaching. As you can see here, the pros include review materials until you can, uh, you can follow, you learn, and you save time to travel to class, and you can catch up later for missing concepts or information, because if you uh, sit in the class, if, the skills, uh, if you didn't catch the idea, then you know, then you cannot uh, uh, review it, but uh, online you can do that and more flexible to learn and more interactive through chatting functions and also less pressure on concentration and also you know, on, uh, uh, on the other things. But the cons also there, as you can see here, it's easy to lose uh, concentration when you're sitting home, uh, watching the computer screen. And uh, sometimes you don't have a stable internet and you get uh, frustrated. And also, it is a really work, uh, weak learning environment at home and missing the classroom environment, need a self discipline, and missing face to face interactions with instructors are the, uh, you know, the disadvantages of online learning. In terms of interactions, uh, and more interactive. Uh, if you have, you know, because the students are not embarrassed to ask questions because their face is not shown. And it's easy to ask by typing, not interrupt the class and the others look at uh, you when you're asking question. And the chatting among students makes it easier to, uh, to have interactions. And why uh, people feel that, you know, it's uh, online teaching is less interactive. It's more time consuming by typing than by speaking, and also there is no classroom environment in the uh, in the online teaching. So that's why. And it was surprising to see high attendance of class when you have online teaching, at least from the you know, the way the students sign up. Uh, this actually is a one for the advantage uh, of the online teaching. So here are a few uh, kind of students suggesting on uh, online teaching and the learning. 
So STEM fields actually it's more uh, beneficial if you have more quiz, more discussions, more interactions with students, and the delivering live online lecture with video on is like still like to see the instructors, not like me here talking. My face is not show. I still like to see the uh, professors, and they like to see the uh, interaction through Blackboard more often. And of course, uh, the full attendance bonus, as this mentioned, you know, the student like to have the bonus if they attend the class, and they like to return uh, to campus as soon as possible. I think they're missing schooling on campus, and also uh, uh, upload recorded course video on Blackboard is very very important. So here are a couple of things I like to share in terms of challenges and the strategies for the online teaching and of course the biggest challenge is unstable internet and the online teaching platforms break down this happens from time to hard time and also students in different time zones and you know then you cannot really offer a one-time lecturing to solve these strategies actually you can prepare a backup plan when the internet is uh, break uh, broken down and the provide the more flexibility upload the recorded the course video to blackboard so the people in the different time zone can watch and also uh, a student in poor area cannot attend the online class because they don't they may not uh, able to uh, access the internet and then you have to in this case you have to change the teaching and learning strategy to uh, those students so that to make sure they can follow. And also instructor, uh, instructors need to make a great efforts in trans transitioning from a face-to-face -to, -face to online teaching. Actually, it's true. Uh, when you change from a, a traditional classroom teaching to online teaching, instructors have to make a more uh, you know, efforts. And then uh, how to resolve this, you give more support through training and the sharing of best practices and take advantages of online course resources you know, provided by university. And also in terms of how to concentrate, engage uh, in online class for the students. And as we already mentioned the pop-up quiz, group discussions, randomly ask the student to answer simple questions. Uh, so that the student will not be embarrassed if they don't uh, get the right answer. And the student turning on video can enhance the uh, sense of presence. So I think to uh, make the online uh, teaching successful, it is very important to have strong support and emphasis on undergraduate teaching from university up management. So at the SUSTEC, actually, uh, in the College of Engineering, we actually allocated some resources to encourage faculty members to create the innovative uh, teaching method for the online teaching. And specifically for online teaching, we allocated the fund to create to encourage the innovation. And think of online teaching. Here, just the three uh, bullets. Uh, how to transform from classroom teaching to online teaching uh, is something we have to think. And maybe down the road, the blended teaching would be uh, another way, even though there is no need for the online teaching, could be beneficial. And then how to get the uh, timely and accurate information about online teaching performance. And I think uh, we need to use, you know, uh, different evaluation uh, uh, systems, like the surveys we have done, seems uh, quite uh, effective. And of course, you pay more attention to the student learning outcomes, uh, satisfaction, and engagement, and back to student-centered learning environment, and the project-based learning is very important. So actually, that's basically uh, what I like to you know, share with everyone here and at the end i'd like to thank the uh, help from mrs uh, Xia Wu. Uh, she actually uh, prepared the uh, uh, slide and also professor yan jun yu 
Professor Fa Tai Zhang and Professor Chi Wang. Actually, they did our surveys uh, for their courses. I listened to their courses, and then this material is actually organized based on uh, the materials from them. And here uh, is our future home of uh, College of Engineering at SUSTEC. And you are very welcome to visit us at SUSTEC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a fantastic um, uh, presentation, Dr. Zheng uh, Zhu. Uh, before I give it over to Hans, our fearless leader, to make some comments and then move on to others and the panelists, uh, I just want to mention that we have 410 people in the audience today. Uh, that's quite a record. Uh, obviously, there will be many, many questions from them. Uh, we will go a little bit over time. Normally, we end at, uh, after one hour, but we'll go about 10 minutes more just to accommodate a few comments and questions. So thank you all for joining. If, if you're not able to get your questions because there are 400 of you, uh, we will follow it up, but keep in mind that we will create an online community where we can have these discussions more informally uh, through the IFIS, GEDC, and, uh, and IUC network. Over to Hans. Come in, Hans. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Chengi, I, this is one of the most thoughtful, effective presentations that uh, Krishna and I have facilitated through our global webinars. I really, really thank you. Just for all of you to know, Changi is an important leader in the GDC community on the executive committee. And he and his president have, uh, have welcomed us and hosted uh, a very, very important global conference at their campus. Earlier also uh, under uh, President Sheehy's leadership at Peking University, we most likely had our most successful GDC Global Conference. I just wanted people to know ab about that. Second is what he has presented, we will share on a video uh, in the IFES community in IUC. Just want you to know. Uh, the only question that I have is given that uh, Shenzhen is the Silicon Valley in China, what is the connection between the university, the students and faculty, and the companies? at this moment, at this difficult, challenging time uh, uh, currently. I'd, I'd appreciate some comments on that. Thank you very much again, Chengi. Okay, Hans, thank you for excellent uh, questions. Actually, we at the SUSTEC do have a capstone design project uh, for the uh, senior uh, graduating students. And uh, typically, all students working groups, four to five, and the projects are all from the industry uh, in center. And what do we do is we have the, uh, uh, like, uh, supervisors from industry, also supervisor from a university working as the uh, team to supervise the uh, uh, project. So uh, during this capstone design course, of course, we have the, uh, the uh, lecture series also to cover a wide range of subjects uh, such as startups, entrepreneurship, and uh, ethics, and uh, communications, uh, leadership, etc. Uh, et At the moment, uh, the, the interactions with the industry is really limited through the uh, also online interactions. So the students working on the project still uh, discuss in group and they brainstorm to prepare when the uh, uh, the uh, situation recovers. At the moment, you know, in uh, in uh, China, uh, the students are not allowed to come back on campus, but the cities are not really already operating as almost normal. So, as soon as the uh, uh, minister of education lifts the restriction for the student coming back, and then those students who have been in discussions on the project, uh, who have been uh, uh, taking the online lectures, and will get together, interact with the industry. So at the moment, we are still also the, trying to do some homework. Thank you. Uh, on that sense. Thank you. I'm going to go quickly to, uh, to Ramiro, then Sireen. Ramiro from IFIS, Sireen from GDC, then Michael Milligan. Uh, and Sunil Maharaj. So just give, you know, just to give them advance notice. Uh, Ramiro, I'm going to unmute you. Please come in. Thank you. Thank you, Shenzhen. Great presentation. Thank you for organizing this, Krishna and Hans. 
Yes, I think I see a clear delay between you and us. We're probably two to three weeks behind you, uh, depending whether you had a spring break or not. Our biggest challenge is, is uh, of course, we have the technology available, but the biggest challenge that we have is access to labs. Uh, students cannot come back to the labs and also uh, access to the internet with uh, remote people from uh, reservations, all that. So Shenzhen, if you can expand a little bit on how are you dealing with people that do not have access to internet. Thank okay, you. Okay, so, so great, actually, great presentation. I, I really appreciate that. Well collected data, thank you. This is uh, again, excellent question. I think uh, uh, in China, we have a few students who uh, who are unable to really have good connections uh, for the uh, class in China. The majority of students have the cell phones and they have data uh, package. They can have access to the uh, to the lectures through the mobile uh, device, but uh, it's really uh, not as easy through this uh, the uh, uh, like a WeChat. Uh, we can share large files, like you can transmit the uh, the uh, uh, like videos more effectively than the uh, than the actually the uh, the uh, desktop. So we can upload also the videos to those students who have uh, uh, don't have good access to the internet through the to the laptop. They can have access to the uh, uh, the materials through the uh, phone by this WeChat. So that's how we do it. Okay, that's like WhatsApp, right? We chat is like WhatsApp. Yeah, WhatsApp, very similar to WhatsApp. That's okay. correct, yeah. Okay, Serene, I'm gonna to go to you. Come in, Serene. Hi, thank you so much for this excellent webinar, Shenge. It was wonderful, so very timely. Um, my question is, well, first off, a comment. Uh, to call this, uh, experience with online teaching is an understatement. You uh, described an all-in-all -all wonderful uh, blended uh, delivery. You did call on a flipped classroom there for uh, a couple times. Um, how many of your or what percentage of your faculty was ready with their teaching background and credentials in blended learning and online delivery tools before this so that you could make this transition so successfully? Oh, this is also a very, very good question. Uh, at Sustech, we normally do not use like a Blackboard and also we don't upload the materials uh, to the, uh, to the uh, course uh, site. And the majority of the instructors, when they give course, uh, they uh, make announcement and make connections through the WeChat. Actually, WeChat in China is very, very popular, like WhatsApp in, uh, in uh, other countries like in US. So, however, because for the uh, formal teaching, now you don't have classroom, so all university requires all the faculty members uh, to create the course on the blackboard. And also we ask all the instructors to record the attendance of the skill because it's actually very easy not to uh, uh, check how many students uh, uh, listen or attend the uh, lectures because you can see how many uh, uh, students sign up. And this is actually a very effective way as I mentioned towards the end of the day, really the effort is the most, most important thing to make the people uh, making effort. I think the university up management have to, you know, uh, put the emphasis on this uh, uh, undergraduate teaching, which is really the thing that at the first step. We value the undergraduate uh, teaching and we put a lot of emphasis. And actually that's why like we require all the department chairs, all the deans, all the VPs, they have to go sit in a few lectures to make sure you know the uh, professor doing a good job. That's another thing we we we, we do. But the uh, professors res uh, uh, responded very well 
and actually when the, the when they first started we checked the materials how many faculty members uploaded the materials on the uh, website course website and uh, amazingly we only see like three four like uh, classes they did not upload the materials in advance and then we talk to the faculty member and they correct it right away because they use different uh, uh, medium uh, to upload the material but we said you have to upload on the blackboard so that is how we do it okay uh so wonderful thank you so much Angie. and i do hope i get to visit you soon okay thank you thank you uh Therine. and i'm going to go to michael milligan uh he's self-muted can you unmute yourself and then um commence michael are you able to come in That's now Sunil Maharaj. I'm going to see if you, Sunil, is our next host for the uh, IFIS conference, GDC. Do you want any comments from you, Sunil? Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Shu. Very good, uh, very interesting, and very informative presentation. I just have one question. I think for electrical engineering, it's relatively, it's relatively easier to do online labs because you can use lab view and online things. Uh, what your experiences, for example, things like chemistry or chemical engineering or thermodynamics? Any experiences on online laboratory work? Then? So very good. Uh, yeah. uh, actually, uh, like in College of Engineering, I I you know, we don't have chemistry labs, but we do have materials lab. So in the materials lab, what do they do? They record the experiments, and then you know, explain the each steps. And then they have virtual, like the uh, instruments to analyze the materials and they put the materials, they type in the information and then they get the data. So then we have all this access by the students and then eventually we give them, we gave them the spectrum. They have to analyze, say, what is compound. As if we are doing the experiment, get to the spectrum or get to the uh, data. And actually, I think the experience is quite uh, uh, quite good. The feedbacks. Similarly, when we do the CAD design, uh, uh, like uh, using CAD, and we also ask them doing the project, like design something, and the student can have access to the uh, CAD uh, remotely, and then they can do the uh, design. So majority of the uh, uh, hands-on experiments are still be able to uh, be offered. Of course, it's very different from you have a hands-on, and the hands-on the experience will, you know, will be provided when the uh, the situation improves when they return. About by by that time, really, it's just like the demonstration. The student will not really run the tests. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thanks, Sunil. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm skimming through uh, lots and lots of questions and comments and. Um, it's hard to keep up with all of them that are coming in because we have more than almost 400 people still online. Uh, I'm going to broad, broadly categorize them into certain, some specific general areas and uh, and maybe you can address them in these broad categories. And I apologize for the individuals who have sent these. I'm not able to mention your name because so many of you. Uh, one one category, Jange, uh, uh, is um, is what are the online resources available? And particularly in, in countries like India, where the small towns and so on, uh, you know, sometimes the financial issues are are are, are a problem. The budgets are limited, uh, and and uh, you know, the place things like Blackboard and other things you know are expensive. Uh, so, what is there a place where the re uh, for online resource for different types of uh, uh, you know uh, platforms that are available, and maybe any of them are open source or free? I think uh, Zoom is free up to one hundred uh, people. And if we have classroom is uh, under 100, we can use Zoom actually very effective. And in terms of, uh, like the testing, the uh, meeting room, that is uh, you can have up to 300 people. Those are very effective. And I think uh, for majority of the places, you can have the uh, a Google meeting room, uh, which is also free if it is a Google meeting. And you can have, I think, I believe it's also about 100 people uh, you can use and you don't have to pay. Even if for the Zoom you have to pay, it's not very expensive. So you can have one department buy one license and to use it. And in all electrical engineering, 
we have students more than 100, so we bought a, a license for, 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 the, for the course. Okay. Uh, for, for the uh, Blackboard, which is actually, I think the majority of universities in uh, North America, they use it. When I was at the uh, University of Alberta, we use uh, E-Class, which is exactly the same as uh, uh, the Blackboard. I'm not, I'm not sure, but they, I think they also changed to Blackboard, which is really good for keeping the materials and the track all the uh, works students have done. So that is the most important. Otherwise, you can use like WhatsApp. I'm sure not every student have the uh, uh, the telephones, and you can use uh, uh, to communicate with the instructors. Okay, great. I think the um, I think as you said, many people are using Blackboard all over the world, and I'm sure the stock in Blackboard, whoever owns Blackboard, has gone up quite a bit, just as Zoom has. Uh, and if so, if anybody wants to get into Blackboard, obviously you have to have like, have an account with them, so you might want to go into their website. And get started, but there is another. Um, I'd like to comment you on uh, your comment on this other um, side that that we use uh, is uh, is um, Canvas. Have you uh, experienced Canvas? Uh, Canvas, actually, I don't have much experience with Canvas. So we haven't had any instructors mm -hmm. uh, who use the debt. Okay. So I'm sorry, I don't know much fine. about this. <laughs> and and, and, and okay. then one one common question that came through for many people is. Um, is the conducting of tests and quizzes and um, and the question of uh, you know people you know, have have me you know, who might be uh, uh, you know, the cheating <laughs> how to how to control cheating and so on so what are the what is your your thoughts on on uh, how to optimize the uh, uh, the conducting of tests and quizzes and exams yeah actually this is i think that the online teaching the biggest challenge is the really evaluating the students you know uh, 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 to uh, to manage the exams is extremely extremely difficult. I think you know in order to do things properly, maybe uh, you do the uh, you do the open book or open uh, book ex exam. And for the quizzes, actually, it's not too bad because all professors they sometimes they even each class when they finish, uh, they leave about five to ten minutes. They give out like a five to ten. Very simple questions, trying to make sure students they really pay attention to the class. And you just ask the students, you know, uh, give five minutes and you submit. So uh, this is another way uh, to, uh, to monitor the progress of students and the concentration of the students for the quizzes. And also students like to have uh, uh, the quizzes like that because this is a good way uh, to manage. But uh, I think the uh, the uh, manage the exam, close the book exam, as you mentioned, the plagiarism is really a big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some people try to uh, manage it by restricting the time. They will, all, they will like announce the uh, exam and open immediately, and then after three hours, they close, and then you have to submit. If you don't submit, then you, you lose marks. So, but still, because the communication is so uh, fast, so convenient, it's very difficult to avoid the plagiarism. So uh, people usually don't do that. Okay. Uh, still, another another type yeah. of questions is, um, it's it's uh, the the faculty of course have to learn how to do a lot of new things as a result of this, and they're trying to learn all over all over the country, all over the world. Are there are there some courses or certifications for? Um, for, for, for faculty training of the set? So at the SUSTEC, we don't have any like uh, online uh, teaching uh, uh, services for uh, faculties, but at the college, what we do is we collected the, the uh, ideals from all the faculty, but not all of the faculty, from those who are very keen on the education, on teaching, and ask them, you know, what is, good ways, and then we gave them support. Like if we feel this, uh, the proposal they uh, submit is innovative, and then we provide the TA to help them to create the, uh, to realize what they want to do. So that is the uh, learning in progress. Hopefully, you know, uh, when we have the uh, GDC meeting in uh, Cape Town, I can share some of the experience uh, in that direction. Okay. 
And of course, the biggest uh, you know, challenge, as everybody has pointed out, is the uh, as and as again as uh, Sunil also mentioned, is the laboratories, you know, all kinds of laboratories and hands-on interactivity, because that is one of the things that the global engineers need to be more uh, communicate and uh, interact and uh, work in teams and so on. So that's the biggest challenge. And I, it looks like you have addressed uh, some of these in your in your in your institution. Uh, how how uh, you want to add any more comments on that aspect of laboratories? Yeah, laboratories. Actually, I think uh, even uh, even without this uh, uh, COVID nineteen uh, uh, crisis or outbreak, people already start to think in terms, you know, uh, the uh, the uh, virtual labs. In a sense, really, you don't have to buy very expensive uh, lab equipment to run to run the lab. You can have those uh, simulated the uh, animations. You can have videos. And the actually online uh, resources are quite good for majority of the courses. Uh, you can get the information. It's, it's, for example, if I need to learn how to run ball mail, I can type in the uh, YouTube or the uh, Googles, and it can come up with some very nice videos to show how it works. And then, uh, uh, then when the student uh, going out to do the internship, they really gain the experience. I think that's something that, uh, you know, we start to do more on the uh, project-based learning, but on the other hand, in terms of, you know, classroom uh, teaching and moving more towards these uh, virtual labs. Okay. I, I just want to thank some of the people who have been uh, texting us, Haider, uh, Mohammed, uh, Nino, Preeti, Ajit, Venkatesh Subramani, Hopi Kumar Chaturvedi, Raji, Ajit, Anil Kumar Pandit, uh, Graciela, along, he's written a long thing about how he does various things in this classroom. Then Shikha Maheshwari, Nagar Kumar, Devraj, Haider, Nino Thomas, Thani, and so on. So quite a lot of active people here, Raj Sekar, Shirish Sane, and uh, Deepak, uh, Dev, Siddiqui, lots and lots of people. Uh, it's, it's fantastic that we still have more than uh, 330 people here. What what we are proposing, and and, and, and Dr. Jangizhi, I want your thoughts on this, is um, is through the uh, with the help of IFES GEDC and uh, create an online community that uh, of learning and do it in an online manner so that perhaps for example all of these I think there are quite a few people in here who have actually suggested other ways and approaches that has worked for them uh, so in addition to what you have shared other people have things to share uh, so I'm proposing that you know, we are proposing that perhaps we should have an online community for sharing maybe meet once a month or once in two weeks or one uh, and and whoever wants to come in comes and uh, tells us what they're doing and no addition without any prepared presentation but just a, a group session where people come in and chat and uh, and talk like this like we're doing right now uh, and, and that now so uh, using online technology to continuously share on a regular basis is um, you know, what do you think of such an idea uh, Dr. I think this is an excellent excellent idea Krishna mm -hmm. I you know I'm sharing my experience with the people but again the feedback is very, very good. All the you know, some other ways we don't know to improve all together for the uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. So we'll arrange, I think we'll talk with Hans and see what he says about it. Hans, you want to talk a little bit about that before we start closing? Well, one of the, one of the, tr one of the tremendous uh, riches of our IFES, GDC, IUC communities is the increasing interconnectivity and learning from one another and breaking the cultural, geographical, and other barriers per se. And you set a tone of communication and of learning that I think is a wonderful example. And I love the idea, uh, Krishna, that you're articulating. We'll find a win-win way to engage our global community in a more new creative way moving forward. Thanks. Thanks, Hans. I, by the way, Michael Milligan was here. He was having some problem with his mic, so he sent a text message saying, you know, to, to pass this on to to everybody. Especially like the thought, especially thought the comparisons of technology, conducting labs, evaluation, and the tips were excellent. So thank you, Michael, for sharing with us. Um, uh, Serene, any any comments from you? Would you like to jump in here and uh, perhaps uh, help us set the stage for this uh, uh, sharing of uh, best practices? Maybe. Um, you know, rather than just somebody making presentations, you know, everybody come in and say, okay, this is what I did today, this is what I did tomorrow, this is what I plan to do, this is the problems we have. That way we're engaging people from the bottoms up and uh, trying to get the community going. What do you think, Serene? I think, 
Thank you so much, Krishna. That is one of the reasons of being of the Global Engineering Dean's Council, of course. And um, th this webinar, the webinar series, in fact, is one of the examples. Uh, but we do have our exchange platform and please stay healthy, safe and in touch. OK, great. So uh, Hans, we'll just wind it up now at this point. Thank you. Uh, I think so. Ramiro, are you still with us? Oh, yes, he had, he had to leave. He had to leave. OK, well, thank you very much, uh, Cengiz. Uh, greetings to the team at Sashtek. And uh, we hope to be together physically, hopefully, in a few months. And take care, all of you, yourself, your health and your families and colleagues. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you yeah, all. Thank this, you all. This has been I'm looking forward to uh, talk to everyone. Mm -hmm. This, by the way, this has been recorded and all of you who have registered for this uh, meeting and attend or even attend, attended or even registered will be sending getting a copy of the recording and we will take a look at all the comments and questions and see if we can come back to them in a, one of our group meetings. Thank you all and uh, stay healthy and stay safe. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.